Welcome back to part 4 of the video series on how I built the catamaran Tokyo Express. Building the second hull was just a repeat of the first hull. Everything was the same except it was a mirror image of the port hull. So things moved a lot quicker on this hull than the first one. I could reuse the frames that I used on the other side. The details of building the hull you'll find in the first two videos. Turning this hull was a lot easier than the first one. It's all done with chain blocks. On this hull I put the anti-fouling on before I turned it. It was a bit easier to apply it. I used a copper epoxy for the anti-fouling, which worked out good. It fouls quicker than the ablative uh, anti-foulings, but it lasts for years. It was still on there five years after I built the boat when I sold it, still in the same condition as when I started. But the main reason I used the copper epoxy is that you can sand it to a hard smooth finish. You just jump over the side every now and again with a handful of steel wool and you're back to a hard smooth surface again. I could get an extra two knots of boat speed after cleaning even a mildly fouled hull on engines. Once the hull was lined up I took out all the temporary frames, sanded the inside and glassed it just the same as the other hull. The bulkheads I'd pre-cut were bonded into place. I removed the aft beam at the back of the floor on the centre section to give easier access at the top of the steps. I don't know how many thousands of times you go up and down those stairs getting in and out of the boat during the build, but every step counts. <laughs> made a wooden jig to fabricate the steps. The steps were made out of 9mm ply. Fiberglass tape around the corners on the inside, and glass on the external surfaces. The rudder shafts were solid stainless steel, which was an overkill. I couldn't get any tube at the time. They weren't going to bend. Welded stainless steel tangs onto the shaft. The rudder itself was plywood construction, fiberglass on the outside. It's worth taking your time and trying to cut a perfect foil section for your rudders and your dagger boards. The foils are so important in the performance of the boat. The shape and the smoothness make a big difference to the drag and the thrust they produce. I spent a lot of time thinking about the forebeam arrangement. Instead of the typical arrangement of an aluminium mast section, I decided to make my own, a composite one-piece arrangement. I dug out my old engineering textbooks and found what data I could on the strength of fiberglass, made an estimate for the forestay loads and applied some pretty heavy safety factors and come up with a fiberglass schedule. The seagull striker and catwalk were all cedar core and the crossbeam was a, was a plywood construction. With all the fairing etc it was a lot more work than a metal arrangement but for me it looked better and it was cheaper to build. I made the two centre boards by basically carving them out of solid cedar Links of cedar were laminated together, sawn and planed and hand carved down to a final shape. I wouldn't do this again. The process was extremely laborious. The final shape was only a rough estimation of the, the real profile. The material costs were high and it was heavy. In fact, in the first year the boat was in the water, I slipped it and replaced both these centre boards with one large mega board. But that's a whole topic on its own. I'd like to go into that on some videos further down the track. Jumping forward quite a few steps, the starboard hull here is really starting to take shape. Here's my brother Paul with a fine eye for detail working his magic. Here's my mum and dad who were a huge help during the build with friends who'd popped in inspecting the progress. And following is some footage their friend Cyril had taken while they were there, which gives a little uh, idea of how things looked at the time. Right, we'll, we'll go inside and have a look inside it. Uh huh. So this will be just, just above the water. Right. So you come in here a boat, or if you want to go for a swim or yep. a fish, yep. you sit on That's there. where you stand. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. And there's one each side, is there? Yeah. 
Yeah. So what size are the motors, Ted? 9.9 uh, .9 horsepower. Right. Um, this will be the galley here. Right. And you pass your meals up into the bridge deck where you'll eat up there. Uh -huh. That's the after bunk. Yeah, that's a, the after cabin. Isn't it? Uh -huh. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Give you a bit of an idea. Well, he's got to make his bunks. Jeez, oh, he's got a lot of work to do yet. Oh yeah, yeah, there is. There's yeah. the rudder post in there where the uh, the shaft will go down to, you know, for the rudders. Uh huh. And um, and that's that'll be the toilet and shower in. In there, yeah. eh? Yeah, yeah bushing area. Yes, uh, Tim's idea to have the uh, controls in here. Mm hmm. And. Um, Particularly as the, the catamarans are so uh, so wide, they've got such a great beam. Mm -hmm. and, uh, manoeuvring alongside, it would be handy to be able to get in the centre and, and judge it yeah. better. The steering and the layout of the boat were designed around operating the boat under autopilot. The idea of standing out in the weather, hanging onto a helm, was not my idea of sailing. The rudders were balanced and the steering system was set up to be able to use a small autopilot. I built a raised seat and forward facing chart table in the bridge deck. Maneuvering around the harbour was done on the wheel from outside, standing on the seat, but as soon as the anchor was up, steering and navigation was done from inside. I'm going to follow this video series with an ebook where I've got room to go into a lot more detail on what I've done and how I've done it, what I've used and uh, things I've learnt, a few tips and tricks along the way. I think I've talked for long enough in this video, hope you enjoyed it. There's two more videos to follow in the next one, the finish of the build and the painting of the boat. And on the last one, the, the launching. For the next video, just click on the link above. Thanks for watching.